With the emergence of modern television technology, retro gamers have struggled to adapt their classic consoles with the times. This is due to newer televisions no longer including many of the ports needed to connect those consoles directly to them. Even when they do keep these ports, they may process the signals incorrectly. This can diminish picture quality and introduce lag into what should be a simple plug and play experience. Two years ago, I reviewed the original Retro Tank 2X as an affordable solution for this problem, even calling it the missing S video port for HD televisions. Earlier this year, I also reviewed its successor, the Retro Tank 2X Pro, which brought some quality of life improvements and enhancements over the original model. Now, the Retro Tank's creator, Mike Chi, has released a new model the RetroTINK 2X Pro Multi-Format, a model that I wouldn't call a replacement if you own any of the prior RetroTINKs, but that might be an option depending on your particular setup. First, let's take a look at the spec sheet. As you can see, the Pro and Multi-Format models look almost identical with similar features for the same price. However, upon closer inspection, you will see that the M model features pass-through 480p component video, something that isn't possible with the original model due to its use of an analog device's video encoder while the new tank utilizes a different chip with its own limitations. For example, the recently added low-res YPBPR mode that mimics pixel dithering effects is currently exclusive to the Pro. The Pro and the M both line double but the results are slightly different due to the onboard chips. Here you can see the Alucard's face and text are reasonably sharp due to its nearest neighbor scale. The Tank M uses a vertical bilinear scale which will result in a softer overall picture. Again, this can be seen on Alucard's face and text. Side by side, you can see that the Pro has slightly sharper pixels. The M also loses the smoothing filter which some may like for 3D graphics but that I wasn't particularly a fan of. Both models do feature the scanline feature, which attempts to mimic the CRT scanline look, but does darken the picture somewhat. Switching resolutions on the fly also performed identically in my tests, which is a plus for the older tank as models have always performed well in that regard. Speaking of switching resolutions, let's take a look at how well the RetroTINK 2X multi-format switches resolutions to 480p. As you can see, it's quick and seamless. While the Pro model cannot handle the transition to 480p at all due to its chipset limitation. Once the signal has passed through the Tink M, the game should look pretty close to your source. The major difference that I found is that the picture is slightly brightened which can wash out some of the details, such as the waterfall behind Jin in the background. Hopefully, this can be tweaked with future software upgrades. Otherwise, having access to native 480p does look noticeably better. On the left, you can see that the 480p picture looks noticeably cleaner than the right side with its 480i flicker. Take a look at Steve's hair in particular, or the life bars, if you have any trouble telling the difference. Here's a full screen transition that will help show the difference for those of you that cannot see it. If you noticed, most of my demonstrations have revolved around the PlayStation 2. This is because its backwards compatibility with the PS1 gives it a huge 240p only backlog in addition to the native library having some 480p games. Many modern TVs do not process 240p over component at all. This means that the Tank M would most likely be the best solution if you regularly use your PS2. You could always try your PS3 if you want to play PS1 games, but keep in mind that the PS3 will force 240p up to 480i, which could ruin the look of your old PS1 games. Later generation PS3 models also lost backwards compatibility with the PS2. 
another console that would benefit from both 240p and 480p pass-through is the Wii with its virtual console. I suspect that once the HD RetroVision component cables are released for the Dreamcast, that console will also benefit. The reason that I left out the GameCube is because the Carby by Insurrection Industries offers a native HDMI solution and the Xbox produces HD resolutions that the tanks are not compatible with. You can use these consoles with the tank, but you're better off with the other solutions. Overall, I find the Retro Tank 2M to be a worthy device alongside the rest of the tank family. If you already own a Retro Tank 2X Pro, then you probably don't need the M as your setup most likely already has the needed workarounds and connections for your modern consoles. In my opinion, if the OSSC isn't an option for you, or you need a plug and play solution that just works, look at the RetroTank 2X Pro for all consoles up to the Dreamcast, and consider the M only if you really want to integrate your PS2 or your Wii directly without any hassle. One last thing before I go. All of the RetroTank products tend to work with Elgato's finicky capture devices. All of my footage here was captured by an Elgato HD60S. If you have an Elgato, then the RetroTank should be on your shortlist. That said, if you're looking to capture from classic consoles, avoid Elgato at all costs. As always, this is Ray Commend. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you on the next video. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to hit that thumbs up, the notification bell, and the 10,000 other things that YouTube would like for you to do just so you can be notified of when I upload a video. It helps the channel and I would greatly appreciate it. As always, thank you and have a great day.